Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and new patch Battlecruiser stuff. I know the new patch has been out for a while, but it kind of lined up nicely with Thanksgiving when I was out of town for a few days, and as a result, this is your first new patch cast. Bottom left-hand corner is the Red Terran player, Jeff. Top right-hand corner is the Blue Terran player, Vanish. This is a master level game sent to me at falconpaladin at gmail.com with the subject of new patch battle cruiser. And I said, okay, yep, this is what we're doing today. This is what we're casting it is definitely this new patch battle cruiser stuff. Battle cruisers, the big thing for them is that they can fire while moving now, which was not something they could do previously. In order to move, they had to stop firing, which made them terrible at pursuit and terrible at running away from things, which I don't know. I'm okay with Battle Cruisers receiving a bit of a buff. The one question about Battle Cruiser change is, does it really make them more viable in the late game? And the answer is no. A massive Corruptor still wrecks them. A massive Void Rays still wrecks them. Uh, a massive Vikings still wrecks them. In any matchup, really, Battle Cruiser late game is just not all that fantastic. We don't see it a lot. I mean, obviously, some players use them quite a bit. I'm looking at you, Nathanius, but in general, like at high, high level StarCraft, it's not a thing. Anyway, uh, Battle Cruiser also had a bit of a change with its range. I believe it decreased the range for its anti-air attack. I'm trying to remember the specifics there, but maybe it was the ground version. But our full thoughts, my thoughts, and Samacron's thoughts on the new patch are available on the Falcon Paladin Hour, the most recent episode. Search Falcon Paladin in your podcast app and you'll find it. You'll find it and you will read it. All right, so Reaper on the way here from Vanish. Not exactly a given in TVT, but the Reaper's name is Ditto. The transforming, transforming copycat Pokemon, this Ditto, came across a Reaper one day. Assuming the Reaper was another Pokemon, Ditto copied the form of the Reaper. This Ditto was taken in for desertion and yelled at by a sergeant. As punishment, Ditto has been sent on this suicide mission. And so far, no one has noticed that this Reaper's face is just two dots in a line. <laughs> Ditto. Ditto Pokemon are hilarious and terrifying. A little bit. One of my friends is a big-time Pokemon guy, uh, and yeah, he's got some Pokemon that are ditto in the shape of other Pokemon in plush form on his desk at work. And yeah, they're kind of unsettling. All right, man, you're just playing defense with your Reaper. Oh, you have a perfect opportunity to get some worker kills here because all Jeff has is Marines. Well, he's blocking off this this Reaper's hop spot, but I think he can get up here, right? And then he blocks off that second hit too, but I still think the Reaper has an ability to get up What the second Reaper. Oh, Vanish is going for a two Reaper opening. All right. Fair enough, dude. I'll allow it. And a Hellion. Okay, so this is generally good against Zerg. Not so good against Terran, especially if Terran happens to have a bunker full of Marines at the top of their ramp. So Jeff, again, kind of blindly hard countered this. I mean, not again, but that's what happened. And here we go. This is real bad for your guys. Like, super bad. The Reaper dies. I, we're going to assume that was not Ditto. Ditto is here. Ditto is fine. Look at Jeff. He's like, I got this. I'll kill you out here in the open. Well, Ditto's dead. No kills on Ditto. Hellion says, I'll fight you. I'll fight you out in the open. I have a flamethrower. The Marines say, no thanks. We're just going to pull back to the safety of our bunker. And we'll be cool. Engineering Bay on the way here from Jeff. He's got a Starport coming in here, too. Is he rushing Battle Cruiser? Please. For all that is holy, tell me he's rushing Battle Cruiser. Banshee on the way from Vanish. Holy smokes, and new Cyclone on the way here from Vanish too. so, hmm. Because you use lock-on ability on buildings, it's so good, you guys. It does enough damage to take down half of a command center with one lock-on once it has the upgrade. There's an upgrade available you can get, but even then, even without the upgrade, it can take down a bunker. I believe the HP, or the damage it does is enough. We'll have to take a look at that. We'll watch this. We'll watch it very, very closely. Natural base coming up for Vanish. Uh, does he know anything about... No, he knows there's a wall here. I guess he assumes there's a base here for Jeff. Have to make that assumption anyway. And yeah, Banshee pushing out here for Vanish. We got ourselves a command center on the way here too for Vanish. So he's really expanding a lot. He recognizes if the Terran player I'm playing against is going to sort of turtle up here, as it were. Well, that's a third command center from Jeff. Well, maybe not. We're just going to try to out-expand each other. So... <laughs> Triple star starport here for Jeff. He's going for Vikings all over the place. Viking, a pretty good answer. Oh, yeah, to this Banshee? Yeah, absolutely. What the heck? How did I get that up? Stop. Stop being here. Oh, he's got Cloak. Where's your detection? He's got a missile turret in the mineral line. He's genius. Where the Vikings go? Come hit this thing. Oh, you don't have enough for a scan. You've been spending... Yep, he's been spending his energy too well. It is the curse. 
of the player who uses his energy too well in his orbital command. He doesn't have enough for a scan here. Oh, there's no detection here at the natural base. There's your scan. One shot. You get two shots out of that scan? That does not seem like enough. This Banshee's doing so, so well for herself. Three kills already. Look at this, though. Raven's already in production, but the supply block from Jeff, it's real. The supply block is real. Gotta get this missile turret. You gotta... Oh, ran out of cloak. Four kills. Five kills is not bad for the Banshee. She does end up dead, which is not a good position to be in, but otherwise... That was pretty good. Pretty good harassment there from Vanish. Not exactly game-altering necessarily, but not too shabby either. All right, so... 36 to 36 workers. Both players on R2 bases. I mean, Jeff was up at some point, and now he's not. That's really your big difference here. Where's our Cyclone at? You made one, right? Oh, they're patrolling way over here. With a Raven, no less. They're really worried about a counter Banshee, which is not coming. I don't believe it's Ravens. It's uh, another command center on the way from Jeff. Wow, Jeff is the most aggressive expanding Terran I've seen in a long, long time. Especially for a TVT, man. All right. Uh, nothing really happening at this age of the game. I guess thanks, everybody, for hanging out. <laughs> For your Monday night, I hope you enjoyed yesterday's cast, a BlizzCon best of five between Rogue and TY, which was just magnificent. It was a good time with two of the top players on planet Earth at BlizzCon 2018. What more do you want from StarCraft in all reality here? Jeff is going mass Raven here. He's even getting Corvid Reactor. Now, the big thing for Raven is that their anti-armor missile, instead of doing 10 damage and knocking down the armor of enemy units, it does zero damage but still knocks down the armor of enemy units. So this is not good anymore. I really don't know how Ketrock is pulling this off. He's still going Mass Raven though. I gotta find one of his games is what I better do. Oh, Widowmine. Bam, sucker. Take that, Hellion. Widowmines also have an upgrade now where if they get Drilling Claws, it gives them permanent cloak when they burrow instead of this thing now where they're visible for a while uh, to the enemy player. Once they've fired, there's a cooldown to where they can fire again, and they're totally visible and easy to pick off. Which you've known about, because that's what's been the case in StarCraft for a long time. But yeah, Drilling Claws allows uh, Widow Mines a bit more utility. We've seen some players at the higher levels forget that's a thing. I believe Home Story Cup is happening or is already finished. And there have been some players that are like, Alright, there was Widow Mine fire, I killed a couple of them, good enough. And just leaving the Widow Mines there, and then the Widow Mines come back and hit them later, and it's like, you get... No, once they fire, they can still be invisible if they have a specific upgrade. That is the Magfield Accelerator upgrade here for Cyclones, allowing them to do bonus damage with their lock-on ability. It's like 400 plus 400? It is. It's 400 plus 400, and that's what, that's what it is here. So two Cyclones with that upgrade can take down a command center, assuming it is not being upgraded, which is kind of incredible. So good damage to be sure. Third base done for Jeff, though, Planetary Fortress. Third base done for Je uh, Vanish. And a fourth base on the way here from Jeff. What are you working on, Vanish? Additional factories. He's mecking it up. He's mecking up his strategy right now. We'll see if that works out for him or not. Where are my promised battle cruisers? Jeff? Jeff? One, two, three. Does he even have a fusion core? He does not even have a fusion core. He's got. Oh, yes, he does. He has a fusion core, but he's not using it for anything right now. Mm, ah, here they are. Hold your horses, Falcon, he says. Calm down. I'm making battle cruisers now, and by golly, he is. All right, so Hellion versus Hellion. Blue Flame's done for Vanish. And Landed Viking versus Hellion. Really, really good. That bonus damage versus Mechanical is fantastic stuff here. Raven's flying in. Auto turret still does a ton of damage. That's for true. No, losing a Raven a little bit there prematurely. Oh, don't fight the auto turrets, guys. That's said, the Cyclone's doing quite a bit of work right there. A lot of SCVs dying thus far. 18 have been killed by Jeff to this point. 70 to 58 harvesters for Jeff. He has a massive advantage. And the Ravens for Jeff trying to get home. They're getting locked on quite nicely. Oh. Uh-oh, this is not a good push. This is not a good push for Jeff at all. And, yep, this base is not yet a planetary fortress, so it's really vulnerable here. Here come the Cyclones using their new lock-on ability versus buildings. Also, the Vikings helping immensely there. Bam! Quick fourth base, huh? Says <laughs> Vanish. 
Nicely done. All right, uh, continuing to push in the front here is Vanish. He feels like he has this game won, which I'm not convinced he does. All right, well, battle cruiser, crap. There are so many Vikings here. Bye, guys. One tactical jumps out somewhere. I don't know where he went, but he is not happy with anything that's going on right now. Vikings just flying over. Uh, any battle cruiser that jumps out of here is going to be in trouble. That said, the missile turret's doing some pretty good work. Cyclones here again. Number all right. So the repair on the battle cruiser. Look at this clutch repair on the BC. Another one jumps in to help with this. Also very very injured. But okay. So battle cruiser being repaired a lot. Not bad against Cyclone as it turns out. That said, blue flame hellions in here. Dude, go after the SCVs. Why are you killing this missile turret? Kill the SCVs. They're the problem here. <laughs> <laughs> this SCV escort is brilliant. I like it. Unfortunately, it still doesn't help you against Vikings who can kite against you all the live long day. There we go. Another roasting up SCVs. Yeah, the kiting is really, really great. Trying to lock on and kill these guys, but oh. That Viking came out at the wrong possible time here. That said, Yamato Cannon is done. And a tactical jump out there. These BCs are functionally immortal with this many SCVs repairing it. It is a crazy amount of dedication here for Jeff to make this happen. It's a huge suck on his resources. But not too shabby. Dude, 11 kills and 14 kills on these Hellions. They've been killing workers like crazy. 28 ki workers killed by Vanish. And now he's up 74 to 49. So, Jeff, you're in a bad place, buddy. You are in an exceptionally, exceptionally bad place here. All right, a lot of missile turrets on the way. Pretty smart stuff. Missile turrets can really shut down battle cruisers quite nicely. That said, the natural base is devoid. Well, it's got three battle or three missile turrets. No battle cruisers. These are all Jeffs. As it turns out, ooh, who's getting drilling claws? Vanish is getting drilling claws. Huh? Oh, perma cloaked widow mine. Not bad, really, in any situation. Oh, what was that sound? Was that the upgrade finishing? So there's a. Physical, a visual indicator that Magfield Accelerator's been complete for Cyclones. And I thought it was the lasers, but I'm not convinced it's the lasers. Jeff replanting his fourth base here at the 9 o'clock position, and the one at 6 o'clock position is gone, but that's okay. Hellion's rolling in. Oh my gosh, not a planetary fortress. What is happening right now? All right, well, goodbye. Goodbye a lot of SCVs, and goodbye the Hellions too, because they are not running, and they are dead as a result. But pushing up this way, battle cruisers flying over these rocks. Kind of a nice animation where they fly up and over this rock instead of like, just kind of scraping along the bottom of it. Did he see this? Oh, he doesn't know about that. He'd probably shut that down if he could. All right, that's it. Hellions bad against battle cruisers. Missile turrets not super great against battle cruisers, but better than most things on the ground, I'd say. Especially problematic here because missile turrets do not benefit from upgrades. Hellions roasting up all the SCVs at the third base entirely. Jeff's fourth base is under attack by Blue Flame Hellions too. And the third base by Vanish is trying to vanish, but Yamato Cannon finishes it off. No reason to fight those missile turrets. And he tactical jumps home to try to save this base or this base or what? This base. He tries to save this base. Weirdly enough, but uh, now suddenly Jeff's fourth base is gone. Thor's on the low ground here for Vanish. They have single target mode enabled, which makes them pretty darn good against BCs. And I don't know if there's enough anti-air to do this. The Cyclones with Lock-On, maybe. Cyclones with Lock-On and the Thor's hitting and the Vikings, too. This is pretty good composition out of Vanish, all things considered. But he just lost his third base, which is fourth base? That was his fourth base. I apologize. It was definitely his fourth. All right, setting up for a an epic confrontation here between these two players. Huh. 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 <laughs> All right, let's do this thing. We ready to do this thing? So many Vikings. There are so many Vikings. This is a brilliant choice here by Vanish. 171 to 132 supply. I think Jeff's in trouble, y'all. All he's really going for are battle cruisers right now. The Thanius style. Upgrades on these dudes are pretty good. They have plus one, plus one. Plus two, plus two. Error is done for Vanish, though, and that makes the Vikings that much better. All right, single target here. Wow. The lock on, the Vikings, the Yamato cannon, and the jump maneuver here. Pretty good. Wiping out all the Thors are dead. You got to push in when that happens, man. If the Thors, if the battlecruisers are not willing to engage... Whoa, one battle cruiser goes down. They can't jump right now. Cyclones trying to use their regular attack and their lock-on ability. Another BC goes down, but all the Cyclones are gone. 
There's not a lot of battle cruiser remaining here, but more lock on trying to focus them out, but no so much damage being done. The Cyclones did take an HP dive as well. An HP nerf as part of this balance patch, which makes them that much more easy to kill. But yeah, fourth base replanted by Vanish. He still has this fifth base that Jeff does not know about. And the fourth base by Jeff, the new fourth base, is happily running. It's 17 to 55 army supply. How does Jeff have that much more army supply right now? I mean, I guess most of it is that Vanish is, I mean, just making stuff. I guess he lost everything during that push, didn't he? He had nothing to go back home with. He kind of overcommitted, overextended just a little bit there, which eh, happens to the best of us, even at the master level, as it turns out. Well, yeah, just going to be more Vikings, going to be more Cyclones here. The factory does require a tech lab to make Cyclones, which means you can't double pump them anymore, Terran players. TPT is a very weird state now compared to what it's been for such a long time. Ever since the Cyclone really came into its own, it's been Cyclone openings for TPT forever, but not anymore. Probably not anymore. All right, so this third base in trouble. There are four missile turrets, which is a pretty decent number, but being able to keep firing while moving is really, really nice. Yamato cannon, jump, jump, and they all jump out. More SCVs getting killed there. 57 workers killed by Jeff, and the battle cruiser come back home. The SCVs repair them. This reminds me of playing the Terran campaign for StarCraft Brood War, where I went battle cruiser just because I love them. They're not that good, though, and then I'd have to bring along... A whole dropship full of SCVs to repair them along the way because they are not as tanky as you would expect them to be. Yeah, let's just say that much. I also read a really interesting article about the very, very early days of StarCraft II and some of the plans that Blizzard had for it. And one of the things they talked about was each uh, each race basically getting a hero-style unit, right? Like the Mothership was for the Protoss like they have now. You can only make one. They're thinking about making a Leviathan for Zerg and then a Thor. Like a really huge, really powerful Thor for Terran you could only make one of. And that would have been a lot of fun. They definitely scrapped those plans except for the Mothership option. And just interesting to see how game development happens and changes over time. That's pretty much the reason I brought that up. Vanish. One, two, three, four, five. He's got a sixth base coming up, man. And you could do this. If your opponent has battle cruisers, the BCs are slow. They don't want to jump in on top of you because that's a death sentence. They will die before they get home. So they want to slowly walk up to your base and kill it and then jump out when they are taking too much damage. Which means you can do this. You can expand a whole ton in between attacks here because the BCs are not moving out until they're repaired. And it takes them a day and a half to get across the map anyway. 3-3 three, three on the way for both players. Surprisingly, Jeffs is actually ahead of Vanishes. Maybe it's close. Maybe Vanish is a tiny bit ahead. It's kind of hard to tell, but I'm just surprised that Jeff isn't anywhere close, considering the state of the upgrades previously here. And Vanish seems to be neglecting them a tiny bit. All right, BC, surprise attack at the fourth base. Again, fire while moving, guys. This is a huge deal. It really is. I mean, every SCV in the world is getting massacred here. What the? Something was attacking there, and that was just a distraction, as it turns out. Just a distraction. Fourth base is gone. Like, there was no Terran here at all. These pieces will soak into the earth. Even if the earth happens to be what looks like metal, uh, it's absorbent, you guys. Okay, fifth base by Vanish. Under trouble here. There are not enough. There are not enough missile turrets to save them from the wrath of two, two battle cruisers. This many of them. SCV's getting killed. A lot of trouble here. Pushing on into a tank position with... Planetary Fortress with your Cyclone, not as good, not as good maybe as you want it to be. These tactical, oh, tactical jump BCs here at Vanish's sixth base, the fifth base is gone, the fourth base is gone, the sixth base has no workers remaining at it, you guys. There's one coming here a little bit late to the party, actually a couple remaining, and these BCs cannot, oh, can they run? Well, I'll try to get a Yamato cannon off there anyway. It is, in fact, 69 to 29 workers, 122 to 71 supply. The battle cruisers are here, and they're mad, and there's nothing to repair them, mind you. So the fact is, a bunch of them are injured. There's a lot of nice red, yellow, orange in these colors, which indicates extremely, extremely injured units. Is that building armor? What the what? He's getting building armor. It's Jeff. All right, fair enough. Actually, is that a... Anyway, that's just two upgrades in one now. can't remember exactly what the other one was. There's another Yamato Cannon and a jump strategy there here. These guys. Really problematic, but there are a lot of them. 15 
Vanish is trying to get six of his own here, which is nice. It's building armor and... The one that allows you to fit more units, I think, allow you to fit more units into a bunker. Probably not, though. Probably not. That's fine. That's fine. We'll roll with it. Hellion's here from Jeff. Does he have the blue flame upgrade? He certainly does. And these SCVs are in trouble. Vanish, man. You got to protect your SCVs on some level. Can't just let them get roasty toasty like this. I mean, sure, the army's going to come save them, but that is so many dead workers. That is 128 workers killed by Jeff in this game. He's going to come up here to this base and try to wipe these out, too. A couple more SCVs are going to die. Bang, battle cruisers, though. Serious business. 3-3 three, three BCs. 3-3 three, three BCs on both sides. Yes, indeed it is. 3-3 three, three with weapon refit for the Yamato Cannon. Both players ready to rock with their BCs. The only problem is Jeff has 17 and Vanish has 9. Not an ideal situation. If you were to ask me, 13 kills, 0 kills, 8 kills, 23 kills, 11 kills, 0 kills, 8, 0. Some of these guys are new, but a lot of them have double-digit kills. That's just how boss they are. Oh, a tactical jump here to the main base, and then a push at the front. And here we go. Yamato versus Yamato. And just so many BCs going down. Vanish is not fleeing with his. And as a result, his final BC dies, and that is the rage quit out of Vanish. Jeff still wants to run around and kill some things, so we will allow him to do that. Oh, nope, he's he's done. He's done. His battle cruisers are victorious, having wiped out the enemy fleet. His BCs are pleased with himself. 25, that is the hero. That is the hero of the game. 25 kills on this guy, which I don't think I can tell exactly which one it is, but I can click on him right here. Oh, I lost him. There he is. So, <laughs> he's in this big mess of battle cruisers. It's really weird that BCs can stack on top of each other. I understand why they do it for game design purposes, but <laughs> it just looks like a big morphing ball of BC. It's very weird. It's very unsettling in a certain way. They're going at all angles. Anyway. Anyway, really fun TVT, man. Jeff sends in the good stuff. 36,000 resources lost for Vanish and 19 for Jeff. Again, I'd like to point out the number of workers that were killed. 133 killed by Jeff. Vanish lost a lot of SCVs. A lot of Blue Flame Hellion attacks. A lot of these Battlecruiser attacks here, too. So, Jeff did not immediately go for BCs, mind you. But he did use the Be Able to Fire while moving ability quite nicely. Very nicely done there. And kept his bases for the most part. He lost a couple of command centers, but it wasn't anything super catastrophic in the long run. That last push where he wiped out the fourth... And the fifth base is here of Vanish, and then really hit this sixth base too very, very hard. Very nice tactical play there from Jeff. All right, so this is going to be a non-sneaky twofer. You might have noticed from the title. I'm going to have a patron game. It's going to be a PVT coming up next. I encourage you to stick around for that. It's a very, very interesting PVT from the lower levels. It's not your standard stuff. And uh, I might be able to promise uh, something really interesting. It's going to be worth your time if you check it out. So stick around. We'll get to that one, and uh, we'll check it out next. All right, welcome back. It's going to be the patron half of this cast. It's going to be between Wartorn and Silverstrike here on Cerulean Fall again. Bottom left-hand corner, we have the red Terran player. His name is Wartorn. And in the top right-hand corner, we have the blue Protoss player named Silverstrike. He went random, you guys. He went random in this game because the portrait is one... That shows random. Okay, so a TVP to follow up your TBT. One of these players is subscribed to me on patreon.com slash falconpaladin for $10 a month, which affords him the opportunity to send a replay to me every single month and get it cast, no questions asked. Okay, here we go. PVT on the new patch? No, not on the new patch here because there's no, uh, no progress bar showing the... Uh, <laughs> Showing the chrono boost. Woof. Okay, you guys. I just got back from Idaho. Just got back from Idaho. Didn't watch any StarCraft. Didn't cast any StarCraft for like two or three days. And, uh, yeah. Okay. So, ooh. A, wait a second. A gateway forge from Silver Strike. What the what is going on here? I don't know, but uh, is there a probe down here? Or is there a... There's an SCV up here. Or there was. Where the heck is this guy? Did he go home? Right, I'm like scrolling through all the SCVs trying to find this dude. Who scouted and where are they now? Was it the probe that just came? Oh, it was just the probe that came down here and threw down a pylon. 
Ah, that's all it is, laddie. All right, fine. That's totally fine. Meanwhile, Barracks is already up here. We've got double gas coming in here from Warthorn, strangely enough, into a factory. So he it looks like he's planning on going maybe some Cyclones. That'd be interesting. He is definitely going for a Marine opening here rather than a Reaper. Which, honestly, you guys, at the lower levels, I know the Reaper's not going to get much damage done. Oh, hang on a second. That progress bar is there on the Chrono. Maybe this is new patch. All right. Hold your horses, Falcon. Let's see what's going on here. What can what else can we check with real quick? Uh, mm, cannons are the same. Marines are the same. Hey, did you guys know that Marines, Zerglings, and Zealots are the only three units in all of StarCraft II that have never been touched in a patch? Never been affected at all for their base stats. Period. Isn't that weird? I think that's kind of weird. All right, so let's see. Factory, if he goes for a Cyclone here, a couple Marines on the way. He is just playing this blind war-torn man. You got a scout. You know what I say. And has a tech lab, and I think he needs the tech lab to build the Cyclone here. So now the Cyclone, if you listen to the... Oh, hold on a second. To the podcast, the Falcon Paladin Hour. That is where I discussed in depth the patch notes for this latest patch of StarCraft II. So if you check that out, you will hear me and Somicron talk about all the differences in the Cyclone. I honestly feel like they're going to be better as he makes a tank. <laughs> he rushes for a tank, which is going to help him immensely here, actually. Look at this. Shield batteries on the way. Robotics facility coming up here. But a tank this early in the game is really, really important to staying alive in this situation. He doesn't know this. He has not scouted this in the teeniest or tiniest of bits. But he wants to be uh, prepared for some kind of a tank drop here. This is going to be medevac, possibly. That's what's fun about these lower level games, you guys, is you don't know what these guys are doing for the most part. Has he... Oh! No, wait. He can't see that, right? I don't think he saw that. The cancel's only visible because of a, just a glitch in how you switch between views here on the replay interface. And a Liberator. Oh, snap. A Liberator's really good here, too. I think he's blindly countering what Silver Strike is doing, you guys. <laughs> how crazy. And throwing up a bunker. What does he know that I don't know? Oh, he scanned... He saw the forge, he saw the cybernetic score, and nothing else, and said, Ah, there's probably some stuff sitting out here. Not that he's bothered to check, mind you. Look at this tank positioning. It's really, really good. It can hit the uh, uh, immortals on the ramp, but can't be hit by the immortals on the ramp. I like the marines here, too, with their big old knives on their guns. They are hanging out in the mineral line in case there's an oracle coming up, but there's not. Not an oracle. It's just going to be immortal with four shield batteries. It is very has style here. It is very mm, flamenco has. Flamenco style. What's his full name? I think it's just Flamenco. He's a Brazilian player. He's largely credited with this style and making it popular and then has picked it up and put it on the huge stage. But anyway, Liberator moving out. This Liberator is going to crush. If you stay out of the range of this cannon, which you can easily do, you can shut down easily half of this mining, if not more. Can you set up here and circle this and stay out of the range of the cannon? And I think there might be a spot right there for you too. Liberator. So here comes the Immortals. So the bunker's going to die. That's not a problem. Ooh, new Cyclone. All right, so Cyclone has 120 hit points. Holy smokes, and using lock on ability on the ground unit. Okay, so definitely new patch. Hey, new patch. Two new patch games here for your... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and call it that. Two new patch games for your Monday. Looking for new patch stuff. I hope you really, really enjoy it. All right, very cool. A Stargate here, Liberator setting up. Honestly, Liberator, come try to take these guys down. Make them run away at the very least. Look at Wartorn. He's floating his command center over like, hey... What's going on? Oh, this ramp is not a good place for you, Immortals. You might get a bunker. You might get, you know, this barracks quite possibly. But you're taking huge shots to the face. In the meantime, I still like the Liberator to head out and harass this mineral line, though. If you can maybe pull that off, that'd be nice. Wartorn. But so far, not really. Another tank in production here. Got a Cyclone out. Again, new model Cyclone. I like it. I don't know. And using that lock-on ability on the Immortal to do huge... And wow, does end up helping take it down there. Even with the shield battery helping there, that was not enough. Look at this, again, a blind counter from Wartorn. Unless he's played against Silver Strike before and he knows what he does. Like, Silver Strike always goes for this style of contain. And Wartorn's like, I got this. Tanks, Liberator's done. That's all I need. All I need to stay alive here. Immortal's going to try to come up here again. Uh-uh. Bad place for just wandering through the Circle of Doom. Wait, don't go back in there. What are you doing? Oh, they're trying to get that tank from the low ground, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> Defender mode is really, really good, Immortals. Okay, well, it's 48 to 33 supply right now. Silver Strike has nothing beyond this Immortal and this Stalker, which is bad, which is really bad for the Protoss player. Sure, he's mining happily back home. Sure, he has a bit of a wall at the front, but 
Again, sending a Liberator across. Okay, all right. Youch, youch. Defender mode circles, man. Oh, a Void Ray. Look at the skin on this Void Ray. That's amazing stuff right there. Wow. Okay, so the Liberator dies. Using the uh, lock on attack and the basic attack against that Void Ray is this Cyclone. Cyclone gonna die though, it's kinda stuck. <laughs> Overextended a little bit there. The bunker's gonna die, the SCV's probably gonna get killed there too. No, it does manage to get spared here by the Protoss army. And Void Ray trying to, again, pick off another unit here. Where are the Marines? There were Marines, oh, there are Marines. They're just in the wrong place. Okay, so Liberator, I like this decision to go for a Void Ray. The Immortals are going for it now. Absolutely going for it. Now that the Liberators are gone, the Marines need to focus down this Void Ray and take it out of the equation immediately. Might have underestimated the power of Marines here, Void Ray. But pulls back to the safety of the shield batteries. Gets healed up there quite nicely. Did take some hull damage in the meantime, but it's not too bad. Vikings out. Here we go. This is what you need is Vikings. Gonna go ahead and kite the crap and extra bonus damage here against the Void Ray man. Yeah, 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 it's not gonna happen for you, Voidry. I understand you're getting healed up right now, but you're taking so much damage. You're draining the energy off of these shield batteries quite nicely. This one has full energy. It does. Okay, so maybe not that bad. The other ones aren't looking too healthy. He's actually building more shield batteries because it feels like he feels like he needs more. This is tight, man. This is a tight little. Ooh, I accidentally got some shots off on the supply depot. This is a tight little game. All right, so what? What the what? He got a ghost. Whoa, War Torn. All right, more respect for you, buddy. <laughs> Ghost! Six kills. Looking great. Marines taking out one of the uh, Void Rays. Other Void Ray flying back to the newly created and therefore full energy shield batteries here. They did talk about making the shield batteries create with no energy and then slowly regenerate over time. Or, it's not regenerate, because just generate. Slowly generate the energy over time. But, nope, that did not happen. Leading to situations like this, where you can use them as emergency forward position units and defensive unit uh, position units here. And meanwhile, Wartorn is mining from a second base, which is really, really nice. Expanding it all here is Silver Strike. Nobody should be. To be honest, you should be. Why would you make a Viking? Viking's not the answer to this. Not the answer to Vikings or Marines. Get out of here, friend. Getting high sec auto tracking is war torn. Also, getting uh, another nuke. Oh no, he's going for personal cloaking, and then he's going to go for another nuke. He's going to try to nuke his way out of this, but he's already broken out, right? He already has his natural base that obviously Silver Strike does not know exists, and therefore it does not exist in the mind of the Protoss player. So, so far so good here for Mortorn. I mean, it's very, it's a weird game, but he's alive. He's mining from two bases. Silver Strike has no interest in expanding whatsoever. What is his answer going to be to this uh, forward nuking stuff that Mortorn's working on? He has two Ghost Academies. He's making two nu nukes at the same time, you guys. Come on. Come on. Decloaking. That skin on that ghost looks awesome. Come here, ghost. Get your gun out of your face. Turn around. I was, I was, nah. Not happening. Are you still? Yeah, I'm still kind of trying to come in here. Two nukes right here. Like right here. What I think shut down Silver Strike's operation pretty well. Starting to get mined out. Still back home. Still working on it. He wasn't fully saturated there, so it's going to take a little bit less time than I expected it to. But here comes Ghost One. There's your nuke. Does he have detection? He has two observers. I don't know where they are. Oh, right there, actually. Huh. Well, not interested in defending against this, that's for sure. All right, nuke number two. Wow. Okay, he just needed the one. Shield batteries down, cannons down. Your shield batteries are all gone. It's time to go for it, says Silver Strike. Dude, you can't go for this. Why are you going up this ramp? There's tanks, there's Marines. You're doing some lifting on a couple of the tanks here, which is nice. It's an all for one right now for Silver Strike. Missile Turret's getting some decent shots off here as well. Phoenix getting taken down. Tanks on the ground just doing terrible, terrible damage there. And that is a good game from Silver Strike. He loses his final Immortal and he taps right out. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That is what we like to see. That was a good time. That was a fantastic, fantastically well played game there from Wartorn. Again, blindly countering exactly what Silver Strike was trying to do. Did not scout at all. Maybe he knew. Maybe he knew what Silver Strike was up to. Silver Strike was going to go for this little proxy flamenco style contain. You make some tanks, make some liberators. You get nukes to break out of it because obviously at the lower levels, nukes are way more effective than they are on the higher levels. 
And you just waste everything that the Protoss player has. This ghost has 15 kills, you guys. Is it just, he just made the one? I think he just ever made the one. Amazing, amazing stuff there. So again, Protoss player lost double the resources that Wartorn did. Working on another Phoenix back here, Silver Strike, but yeah. Nope, not going to happen. Pretty valiant effort there on that final battle. Lifting the tanks was pretty smart, but too many Marines on the ground. Too many Vikings in the sky. The Immortals couldn't deal with the tanks quite quickly enough. And especially this tank back here doing some damage work, if not actually getting kills. Five kills and five kills each on these guys. They're bosses. Bosses. But yeah, Silver Strike really should have expanded, honestly. I mean, Wartorn had no interest in pushing over here, so an expansion, two base in it to the one base Terran would have helped a lot, but... In the end, Terran's your winner, Wartorn, is victorious, and that's going to be it for me. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another StarCraft II Legacy of the Void upload. A little bit of a twofer here. Hope you enjoyed Game 1 and Game 2. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.